crime and punishment. It's what these legal codes were all about. These aren't your everyday rules, we're talking eye for an eye justice, punishments that will make you cringe, and consequences so severe you'll be thanking your lucky stars you weren't born in ancient times. Let's unravel the shocking truth behind the laws everyone had to obey. Or else. We are about to time travel to ancient Mesopotamia. It seemed fair to start off right at the beginning with what is considered to be the first legal code ever created. Picture this. You're in the bustling city-state of Lagash around 2350 BC. Corruption runs rampant, the rich are getting richer, and the poor are, well, you get the picture. Enter Urukagina, the ruler who said enough is enough. This guy wasn't your typical king, he was a reformer. Urukagina created what some consider to be the first ever legal code to level the playing field. This code wasn't just about stopping crime, it was about fairness. It tackled everything from protecting widows and orphans to cracking down on greedy officials. Imagine a time when you couldn't be forced to sell your stuff to your or boss or get beaten for asking for a fair price. That was Urukagina's vision. So while the actual text of his laws might be lost to the sands of time, Urukagina's legacy as an early champion of justice and equality lives on. If you've ever heard the phrase an eye for an eye, then you have been essentially quoting the Code of Hammurabi, a super old set of laws from ancient Babylon, think Mesopotamia around 1754 BC. This king, Hammurabi, wasn't messing around. He wanted to create order in his kingdom and this code was his way of doing it. Imagine it like a giant stone tablet covered in rules, kind of like a super strict rule book for life. The Code of Hammurabi wasn't just about punishment though, it covered everything from business deals and property rights to family matters and even medical malpractice. For example, if a doctor messed up a surgery and the patient died, guess what? The doctor was gonna be in big trouble. The consequences for breaking the law varied depending on who you were. Nobles, commoners, and slaves all faced different punishments. But here's the kicker, Hammurabi's code wasn't always fair. If you were a slave who broke the law, you might get the death penalty, but if you were a rich noble, you might just pay a fine. Not exactly equal justice for all. Right? Still, the Code of Hammurabi is a pretty impressive piece of history. It's one of the earliest examples of written legal code, and it shows us a lot about how society worked back then. Plus, it's the origin of that famous phrase we still use today, which is kind of cool to think about. All right, let's dive into the Law of Moses, a real cornerstone of ancient Israelite society. So, picture you're wandering the desert with a bunch of other folks, and your leader, Moses, comes down from from a mountain with a set of rules written on stone tablets. Talk about a dramatic delivery. These laws found in the Torah, which are the first five books of the Old Testament, weren't just about keeping order, they were deeply intertwined with the Israelites' faith. Think of them as a divine instruction manual for how to live a righteous life. There were rules for everything. How to worship God, how to treat your neighbor, spoiler alert, be kind, what foods to eat, even how to deal with crime and punishment. Disobedience could lead to divine retribution, ostracism from the community, or punishments like stoning or exile. And now some of these laws might seem a little bit out there to us modern folk. For example, working on the Sabbath was a big no-no, punishable by death. But these laws were written for a different time and place, and many held deep symbolic meaning. The Law of Moses wasn't just a list of rules, it was a way of life. It shaped the Israel Israelites' values, customs, and identity, and even though many of its specific regulations aren't followed as strictly today, its influence can still be felt in Judaism and even in broader Western legal traditions. Have you ever heard of the saying, knowledge is power. Well, that was definitely the case in ancient Rome around 451 BC. The plebeians, or the common folk, were fed up with the patricians, the wealthy elite, having all of the legal know-how and using it to their advantage. So after a whole lot of protesting and demanding a fair shake, the plebeians got their way. 
the 12 tables were born. These 12 bronze tablets were a game changer. They basically spelled out the law of the land for everyone, from the richest senator to the poorest farmer. Everything was covered from court procedures and property rights to debt and punishment. You could say it was like Rome's first legal starter kit for all of its citizens. So. What was in this ancient rule book? Well, it definitely wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Some laws were pretty harsh, even by today's standards. For example, if you were caught stealing at night, the owner was allowed to kill you on the spot. But hey, at least everyone knew the rules of the game. The 12 tables were a big deal because they made the law public and accessible to all. No more secret legal handshakes for the patricians. This was a huge step towards a fairer and more transparent legal system, and it paved the way for many modern legal systems around the world. So next time you complain about legal jargon, just be thankful you're not living in ancient Rome trying to decipher the 12 tables. Picture ancient Athens, 7th century BC, a city buzzing with trade, philosophy, and democracy, sort of. But beneath the surface, there was a lot of tension. The rich and powerful aristocrats were pulling the strings, and the regular folks were getting fed up with their made-up on-the-fly laws. Enter Draco a lawmaker with a reputation for being intense. Draco's solution? The Draconian Constitution. Basically, this was the first ever written law code for Athens, and it was definitely a bit of a doozy. We're talking eye-popping punishments for even minor crimes. Stealing an apple? Death penalty. Owing someone money? Death penalty. Like seriously dude, it was so harsh that people started saying the laws were written in blood, not ink. Now we don't actually have the original document so we can't be 100% sure how extreme it really was, but historians think that Draco was trying to send a message. Law and order are here to stay, so don't even think about messing around. And you know what? It kind of worked. The draconian constitution brought a sense of stability and predictability to Athens, even if it was based on fear. But of course, it wasn't exactly a hit with the people. Turns out nobody likes living under a constant threat of execution. So about 30 years later, a new lawmaker named Sullen came along and softened things up a bit. He repealed most of Draco's laws, except for the ones about taking lives, because well, we still don't like that. Ever heard of a legal code carved in stone? Well, the Gorton Code was exactly that. Discovered on the island of Crete, this ancient Greek text gave us a peek into everyday life of the 5th century BC. It's like the ultimate rulebook for the city of Gorton, covering everything from messy divorces and inheritance squabbles to the serious stuff like harming people and adultery. Surprisingly, the punishments weren't as brutal as you might expect. Instead of throwing folks in jail, fines were the preferred way to deal with most offenses. And get this, the code even granted women some rights, like the ability to inherit property if their hubby kicked the bucket. Pretty progressive for its time, right? So the Gorton Code wasn't just some dusty old relic, it was a snapshot of a society figuring out how to live together and settle disputes fairly. Imagine being the ruler of a massive empire stretching across most of India back in the 3rd century BC. That was Emperor Ashoka. But he wasn't your average ruler. After a particularly brutal war, he had a change of heart and converted to Buddhism. Instead of flexing his military muscles, he decided to spread good vibes throughout his edicts of Ashoka. These weren't your typical laws with harsh punishments. Think of them more like massive stone billboards with Ashoka's personal advice for a happy life and a harmonious society. He preached religious tolerance, non-violence, animal welfare, and even environmental mental protection, another one just way ahead of its time. Sure, there weren't any fines or jail time for ignoring his edicts, but they did carry the weight of the emperor's word. So while Ashoka wasn't forcing anyone to follow his advice, his messages definitely influenced the people of his empire and left a lasting legacy of compassion and ethical governance. Basically just the opposite of the draconian code. 
Ever wonder what life was like in ancient India? The Law of Manu was like their ultimate guidebook, covering everything from the caste system, you know, the social classes, to how to be a good wife or husband. This set of rules was a big deal for people, kind of like a combo of the Bible and the legal system. It even told people what to eat and how to act at funerals. But this wasn't just about being a good person. Breaking the rules could have serious consequences. You might get kicked out of your social circle, lose your place in the caste system, or even be reincarnated as a bug in your next life. So. Yeah, people took the law of Manu pretty seriously back in the day. It was a big part of shaping Indian society and culture, and some of its ideas are still debated today. The Tang Code was like the ultimate rule book for China during the Tang Dynasty, which lasted for almost 300 years starting in the 7th century AD. Imagine a massive legal document covering everything from how to behave in public to what happens if you break the law. It was super detailed, outlining punishments for everything from petty theft to treason. The Tang Code wasn't just about keeping people in line though, it also promoted Confucian values like respect for elders and obedience to authority. It even regulated stuff like marriage and inheritance. The punishments could be pretty harsh, ranging from fines and beatings to exile and even death. But the Tang Code wasn't all doom and gloom, it also helped to create a stable society where people knew what was expected of them. Think of it like the backbone of a well organized empire. Empire. Imagine having to dig through piles of dusty old law books to figure out what was legal and what wasn't. That's the kind of chaos the Byzantine Empire faced back in the 6th century AD. Enter Emperor Justinian, the law loving ruler who decided to clean up this mess. He commissioned a team of legal experts to gather, organize, and update centuries of Roman law. The result? A massive collection called the Corpus Juris Civilis, which translates to body of civil law. This wasn't just some dry legal textbook, it was an absolute game changer. It laid the groundwork for legal systems across Europe, influencing everything from property rights to contract law. Even today, many legal principles we take for granted trace their roots back to this ancient masterpiece. So next time you sign a lease or buy a car, remember you're unknowingly participating in a legal tradition that began with Justin ambitious project over 1500 years ago. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again very soon. Goodbye. All right. What's up, Jen? You saw your name was on this? Hi, Hi Jen. Hi, Jen. What's up? All right. Urukagina. Urukagina. That's how you say it, I looked it up, I've been repeating it in my head for the last 10 minutes. Created what some consider to be the first evil le what? The first evil. <laughs> there were rules, double <laughs> rules. Picture ancient Athens, 7th century BC, a buzzling, what the f <laughs> I just like really went off script and went off life there for a second. Okay, <sighs> my mouth is so dry. <laughs> I'm grabbing a drink of water. Give me one second. My mouth is so dry actually. Last number. Literally, I think I have like two more. <laughs> Sorry, Jen, I was just so f***ing thirsty. It's hotter than a mother here. Okay. Whew, I feel like a new woman.